channel. My name is Catherine Margaret Kruger and I will tell you the story behind the story. Now, I'm not just being funny, but grab yourself a cup of coffee, sit back and listen because I will tell you the story behind the history of South African people, places, animals, <laughs> and who knows what else. So, today I will tell you about Vorat Voltamade, the first European hero on the south tip of Africa, here in Cape Town, right about in the 1770s. Now, before we get to the whole hero story, let's first see who was Vorat Voltamade. Now, Vorat Voltamade was born in 1708 in Schaumburg, Germany. Later on, um, he wanted to work as a soldier for the VOC, Verenigde Oost-Indische Compagnie, or Dutch East Indian Company. He went to his wife, Charlotta, Jana Charlotta, and asked her, okay, or told her, apparently, my dear, I would love to go and work for the VOC down in the Cape of Good Hope. She said, mm, I'm not joining you, uh, but luckily, his two sons wanted to join the company as well. So it was Ludwig, uh, or Christian Ludwig, his one son joined him in the Cape, and the other son, who heaven knows what his name was, went all the way to Batavia, Batavia, present day Jakarta, Indonesia. So at first, Vorat was the corporal of the company at one of the company post Stienberg. He was there from 1752 until 1755. Not for a long time. He probably longed for his wife and decided to go back to Europe. Then in 1770, he decided to come back to South Africa. Nobody knows if his wife joined him or not. So they came back to South Africa and here he started working for the VOC again. But this time, not as a soldier, but as a dairy farmer. Today you can still uh, find his house in Zwarfle. Now that is a small little cottage overlooking Parla Island. Now you're probably thinking by now, what the heck? Catherine Margaret Kruger, can you please just get on to the hero story of Vorat Voltamada? So here goes. 1773. There was a huge storm brewing over Cape Town and Table Bay. Unfortunately, there were five ships anchored in the bay. <laughs> they were not supposed to be there, you see. It was company policy that each year after the 15th of May, all ships had to be anchored in False Bay and not in Table Bay. Now, the reason for, for anchorage in False Bay is because in the winter time, the northwesterly wind blows over Cape Town and Table Bay, causing huge, huge waves breaking ships in two. So why these five ships were actually then in Table Bay, that, my friend, I can't tell you. You can just make up your own, own story. I think it was all about money. Now, one of the, the ship's name was the Jonge Thomas. This ship sailed into Table Bay on the 15th of May. On board was 207 men, captained by Barend Lammeren. What else was actually on the ship? 18 money boxes. So once they've anchored in Table Bay, the governor of, of the Cape at the moment was Governor von Plettenberg. He ordered his men, go and fetch those money boxes immediately and bring it to the castle of Good Hope. Now, from the 15th of May, the Jonge Tuomas was in the bay until the 31st of May. On 31st of May, 
it was ready to set sail to Batavia. Batavia, present day Jakarta, Indonesia. Now, unfortunately, a storm broke out, breaking the, the ships loose from, from their um, anchors. And in the morning of the 1st of June, around about at 6.30, the Jonge Thomas was flushing left, right and center into in the waves. So what happened was Barden, the captain, thought, oh my goodness gracious, I would actually just try to steer the ship sort of more to the beach side and to towards a sand bank at the mouth of the, the Salt River. <laughs> but little did uh, Barden know that the Salt River broke its banks and water were flowing into the ocean. And that broke the bank of the Vinonga Tuamas. You see, it got stuck on the sand bank and then huge waves crushed the ship in half and broke it in half. When the news actually um, got ashore, um, soldiers went all the way to from Tekenberg, the governor, and told him, listen here, there's a big storm out there and the younger Thomas, it, it's really looking bad out there. Oh, for Plechtenburg, he just stayed in his warm bed. Oh, you know, he had these money boxes, 18 of the money boxes. So he didn't give a damn about the, the soldiers and the, the sailors that was drowning. He ordered 30 of the VOC soldiers to go onto the beach and whatever of the cargo uh, that was fl uh, flat and flushed onto the beach they must gather and make sure that nobody steals anything first thing they did and it was the policy at that stage was to build a, a wooden sort of a platform erect a pole on it and threw a, a rope over the pole to just be like a warning to trespassers that would actually steal something. They would be hanged on the beach if they stole something. Weird, weird. But anyhow, that's what they did. And among the 30 um, soldiers, who was there? The son of Vorad Voltemade, um, of Karl Ludwig Voltemade. When Vorat Voltemade heard about the news of the Jonge Thomas, remember he had a, a dairy uh, for the VOC very close to the mouth of the Salt River. He decided, goodness gracious, I must go to the beach and take my son that is on the beach. I must take him some wine and bread. Heaven knows why he must take him wine. Strange, but uh, yeah, if it, if it was me, my dad would also bring me some wine rather than water. Anyhow, so he jumped on his horse with the wine and the bread, and the horse name was Funk. Some people say that the horse name was Fleur. Now, Fleur in, in French is flower, and Funk in Afrikaans is spark. Now, I like the name spark much more than, than flower. So let's say the horse's name was Spark or Funk. <laughs> he jumped onto Funk's back and he rode all the way to the beach. When he got onto the beach, he couldn't believe his eyes. People were screaming. Um, sailors that was actually still on the wreck were screaming for help. He didn't think twice. What did Volrad Voldemar do? Without a rope, and never knows why he didn't take a rope with him, he jumped onto Funk's back and rode into the waves. And he was yelling at the men that was on the wreck. Remember, the Yonga Thomas now broke into two. And he was yelling, Schreit mein Pferd zu stark! 
grijp mijn paard zijn staart. Slecht weer mijn per keer. That, in my Afrikaans Dutch way, that would be grab my horse's tail. Only two at a time. So two men jumped into the water and grabbed the horse by its tail and off went Funk and, and Voorraad Woltemade all the way to the beach and his first two people were saved. He didn't stop there. Now he went in seven times, each time bringing out two more people, two more people. By the 14th uh, uh, person that he saved, he and Funk was so, so tired. He dismounted his horse and he thought, okay, I had enough, this is it. And then suddenly somebody, somebody on the, the wreck shouted, please save us as well. And he decided to go back. And this was for the last time. He jumped onto Fonk's back, rode into the waves. And probably the men that was still on this shipwreck knew that was the last time that Funk and Rora Voltemade would ride or rode into the, the, the waves to save people. I don't know how many of them actually then jumped into the water, grabbing any part of the horse. And one fool grabbed him here on his reins and pulling his head underneath the waves. Needless to say, that was the last time that Vorad and Funk could save any people. They all drowned. In about two minutes time, they were underneath the water. They didn't hear any more screams. The soldiers went back to their barracks. The beach were cleared with all the goods that flushed onto the, the beach. The next day, the whole beach was scattered with bodies. 47 men survived, of which Vorat Voltemade had saved 14 of them. Among the bodies on the beach was Vorat Voltemade's as well as the Captain Barent. <laughs> For Captain Barent, there was a company funeral. For Volrat Voltemade, <laughs> they probably just laughed because he was a fool of going into the, the rough waters and saving the people. Well, that's what they thought. In the first report to Holland, Volrat Voltemade's name wasn't even mentioned. It was only in 1775, two years later, that Anders Sparman wrote his book, A Voyage to the Cape of Good Hope, that Vorat Voltemade's name was mentioned. You see, Anders was on the beach today and one of the soldiers that saw what Vorat Voltemade did. So only then the VOC started mentioning his name and saw him as a big hero. They even named a ship after him, the Held Vorrad Voltemade, or the Hero Vorrad Voltemade. In South Africa, we have his little cottage on the dairy farm, and we have a statue close by of him and his horse, Fonk. The highest decoration for bravery in South Africa is named after him the Vorat Voltemade Medal. There is also a ghost story connected to Vorat Voltemade. You see, Joss Barker owned his milking or dairy cottage at one stage and uh, she lived in the little cottage and each night, around about 12, Vorat Voltemade and his horse, or his ghost horse, Funk, would ride into the little cottage. One evening, Miss Barker really had enough, and she just told him, Listen here, Vorat, if you want to ride your horse, just go and do it outside. And from that day, he never entered the house again. Maybe you can see him outside. 
History lovers, that was the history behind Vorat Voltemade. Join me by historying around through time. Click like, subscribe and share. And join me for my next video on South African history of people, places and maybe some animals.